So the BTO is a scientific research organisation. We have 70,000 volunteers go out on a weekly basis and collect observations across the whole of Britain. So they're going out, they're looking at birds and they're telling us what they see. All that information comes here to the headquarters of the BTO and then our scientists do the number crunching, produce reports, trends, uh, status of birds so we know whether they're doing well or, or badly. So my name's Paul Stancliffe and I'm the media manager for the British Trust for Ornithology. So the BTO is a scientific research organisation. Uh, we have 100 staff here at the nunnery, uh, the majority of them are scientists. Since the BTO started working on standardised methods of recording, then the way the data is collected has just improved. And that's what our scientists do quite a lot of the time. They're working on improving the methods around recording and how to get the best data possible. So it has definitely improved since the BTO was founded. So this grand looking chap up here is John Cordeaux. Uh, John Cordeaux spent his life studying the migration of birds. And around the late 1800s, he had the idea of using all of the lighthouse keepers around Britain, and there were lots, to collect bird observations for him. Throughout the migration period, throughout spring and autumn, he would get them to count all the birds passing by the lighthouse and submit that data to him. So he's very much the grandfather of British ornithology. One of the schemes that we run here at the BTO is the ringing scheme. This is where we attach uniquely numbered metal rings to the legs of birds. Once a ring is attached, that bird becomes an individual because the number is never ever repeated again. And that means that we can then follow that individual bird for the rest of its life and hopefully get a full life history of that bird. This string I'm holding here, these are for the smallest birds, so you'd fit uh, uh, one of these rings on a gold crest, you know, Britain's smallest bird. And, but they come in all sizes, up to the larger rings here. You know, these would we'd fit on uh, a bird the size of a goose, for instance. Um, and on some of the larger birds, we can do uh, fit these rings. These are colour rings, so they have a unique colour. They can come in reds and greens, um, pinks, limes. Uh, and some of them have, uh, again, unique numbers on. What this means is once a bird's wearing a colour ring, you don't have to re-trap it to get the number. You'd really struggle to read that number on a bird in the field. But this one you'd be able to see. And if you see a, a bird carrying a colour ring with a number like that, you can report that number to the BTO. They will get a little bit of history of that bird, but they'll also give you the full life history of the bird so far. We only have the one nature reserve, the Nunnery Lakes here in Thetford, um, and it's really important. So we're in the Breckland environmentally sensitive area, so there's some special habitats, some of which are encompassed in the reserve. So we've got some dry grassland which has specialist uh, flowers such as purple stemmed cat's tail, which is a rare type of grass, tower mustard and a few other things like that. So there's some quite specific plants that live there. And there's a range of birds, some of which are fairly common. So we've got a range of fairly common water birds, coots, moorhens, tufted ducks and so on. And some of which are a little bit more unusual. So we've got quite a good population of marsh tits, for example, in the uh, older woodland along the river. So there's, there's a range of habitats uh, in a small area quite close to a town and, and sandwiched between sort of arable land and other land uses. So it, it's an oasis. So it's an incredible asset to, for the BTO. Um, our scientists quite often will trial methods on the reserve that they then roll out to observers across the whole of the UK. And we do carry out our own research there. We have a, a thing called um, a CES ringing scheme. This is a constant effort scheme in which you go out every year, you put the same nets up in exactly the same place, and then you can compare your catches of birds between one year and the next and determine whether the winter has been good for adult survival or, or juvenile survival um, and that's really powerful.
There are probably around about 200 species been recorded on the nature reserve, uh, not just birds, um, it's, it's there for all wildlife. Uh, more recently we have otters that now occupy the reserve, there's probably two family of otters there right now. Uh, water voles have started to come back onto the reserve. It's also really important for dragonflies, we get some really good species of dragonfly during the, the summer months, uh, things like large red-eyed damselfly. So there's a whole host of wildlife that uses the reserve, not just birds. Um, and, and that makes it an incredibly important site.